Hey, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to take GIS stuff and turn it into a template for those cool 3D lasers. I'll take a digital elevation model, generate some contours, I'll arrange them in Illustrator, and I'll send them to my friend Chris Capelli who has a Glowforge laser cutting printer thing. Here we go. Here is a digital elevation model of the island of Hawaii, the big island. Why does it look weird like a big plus sign? It's because I actually mosaiced it together from five separate digital elevation model images from NASA. Boy, that looks weird. What if we just, you know, change the background color to be black? Oh, good. No, it doesn't look weird anymore. By the way, I'll open the properties for this. My maps units and the units of this digital elevation model are meters. That'll be important for later. I'll zoom in and see what we've got. This is pretty detailed. This is 30 meter resolution scan from a NASA space shuttle, which is just amazing. But it's too much detail for what we want to do. We just want to have this be like a cute little stack of wooden pieces that a human being can assemble with their fingers and you know be able to cut out with a laser. So we need to generalize this image. How do you generalize an image. That's weird. We usually think of generalization in terms of vectors, simplifying vector paths. Well, you can generalize an image kind of like how I would generalize my worldview by taking off my glasses. Everything becomes blurry. That's a way to generalize imagery. I'm going to open the imagery tab, click on this raster functions, and I'm going to go into a category called statistical. Now there's a great blur function kind of hidden in this tool called statistics. I open up statistics and I point it at my Hawaii GeoTIFF. Mean is fine. Uh, it's just, hey, how do you want to blur this thing? Do you want to take the average of every three by three row chunk to do, 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 moving average? I'm going to boost mine to 12 and I'll create a new layer. It's done. That's fast. And the cool thing about raster functions is it doesn't create a new file for me to save and just bloat my computer. It just re-renders it in a new layer, just stored in my computer's memory. It's not making a new actual file. In the appearance, let me just tweak this so it's not so jaggy. And uh, the stretch type, right now it's doing by default a percent clip, which cuts off a lot of my data. I just wanted to say minimum and maximum. Minimum, by the way, is zero meters, which is sea level. And then it goes all the way up to 4,213 meters at the peak of the island of Hawaii. Let me zoom in to show you what I've got. It's, uh, it's blurrier. That's what I wanted. So before, and now we've just got less detail. Less detail is good in this case. I can turn off Hawaii. Now we're ready to create some contours. So I'm gonna go to the analysis tab, choose tools, search here. I'm just going to search for contour. The contour tool is available in spatial analyst or 3D analyst extensions. So either one of those, I'm just going to go with the spatial analyst one. Now, by the way, this tool is made and managed by my colleague, Steve Lynch. Great person. All of these tools and features are all created by people doing their best. Human beings, we're all in this together. It asks me what my input raster is. I'll point it at my blurry Hawaii and it asks me, where do you want to save your contours, John? And I'll just keep them in the default geo database of this project. That's fine. You could save it somewhere else if you wanted to. And I'll call this contours. Now the contour interval, how often do I want to create a contour ring? Now, of course, a contour is just a line that follows equal elevation. This is a really tall place. I mean, it's over 4,000 meters tall. The unit here is the same unit as my map, which was meters. So I'm going to make this 500 meters, which is goodness. That's a half a kilometer in elevation every ring. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaii is amazing. Base contour, zero. So our first line of elevation here, our first contour line will be tracing sea level. That's exactly what I want. Z factor is a multiplier. If I wanted to say, change this to feet, I could multiply this and I'd say 3.28 here instead of one. Now the contour type, we're going to leave it as contour because I want just simple contour lines. So I'm just going to go with contours, simple um, lines. That's all we need. Let's just hit go. And that is our resulting set of contour lines, which is wonderful. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine individual layers of wood stacked up on top of each other ultimately. If you want more layers of wood, it's gonna be taller. So you just make this a smaller contour interval. Experiment, have fun. And it's not too detailed. If we had run this on the original Hawaii one, when I zoom in, 
these things would just be bonkers detailed and we have a, we'd have little islands all over the place like this. We've pretty much done our nerdy GIS work here in ArcGIS Pro. I thank you for your service, ArcGIS Pro, Steve Lynch and Contour Tool. Let's take this to Illustrator where we can play around with optimizing this for the laser cutter. I'll go to the Share tab and I'll choose Export Map. My file type, I could export it as a simple SVG file the actual laser cutter printer thing wants to consume an SVG file. But I've got some work to do before I export it directly, uh, namely moving these guys around so they don't overlap with each other. But I'm gonna use an AIX format. AIX is available to me because um, I'm going to use maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. This is the way that um, you can export your content into Illustrator. I'm gonna export my map to Illustrator using the AIX component and it's great because it keeps all of my layers uh, the way I want. If I have labels and layer names that are meaningful, it'll maintain all of those in my Illustrator document and run it. That was fast. Let's see what we've got. Okay, here we are in Illustrator with our AIX file opened up and by golly, I have forgotten to actually remove my DEM image. I didn't need to, to include that. So I'm gonna drag this down to the garbage. When you do this, you can uncheck your, um, your um, and I have a background color. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff. You can uncheck your elevation image. Look at all this stuff I left in. There we go. Okay, nice and tidy. Remember how fast it exported? It would have been eight times faster. So now we've got a bunch of paths in Illustrator. I'm gonna take a second and zoom around and scan for little islands that are too small for the laser printer to practically cut out and I'm just gonna delete those. Now the maximum cutting size for a Glowforge, which is what Chris has, is about 19 inches wide by 11 inches tall or deep. So I'm gonna go into the document setup and I'm gonna change my units to inches and I'm gonna edit the artboard to be 19 inches by 11 inches. Okay, now if we look at the peak of our set of contour lines, we've got this really delicate shape here, which is actually the tilted caldera ring of the peak of Mauna Loa. It's, I wanna make this easier for Chris to cut and assemble. I wanna make this a little bit chunkier. So I'm gonna select this path. I'm going to object, path, offset path. And I'll set this to round, and I'm gonna make this really small, like 02 of an inch. And then I can delete the unwanted stuff. Okay, that should be manageable by a laser and some human fingers. Now if you take a close look at these paths. Look how insanely detailed these are. We can really simplify this and make our file a lot smaller and maybe make the laser a little bit happier. And we don't want angry lasers. So I'll select everything and I'll go to the object and path simplify. So much of Illustrator is just GIS light. And I'll slide this guy way closer to this. And visually there's essentially no difference. Now when I zoom in, a lot more manageable. Okay, now I'm gonna start grouping contour lines of equal elevation. But first I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more. I'm gonna drag this group called contours right up to the top. And I can get rid of this clipping path and this empty group now. So I just have my layer, my contour group, and then all these paths. So this one I'll group. Control G and I'll drag it all the way to the bottom and I'll name it zero. Now, why did I group this even though there's just one? Because I found when I save this as an SVG later, if I group anything, I have to group everything or else some of them have weird rotation offsets. I don't get it, but it's just a little trade craft. I'm giving you a heads up on. I'll select the next elevation ring, group it, drag it down to its order. 500, and so on.
Okay, all grouped up by equal elevation. Now here's a trick that's gonna make your assembly way easier. Instead of it just being a blind 3D puzzle that you'll have to put together with this big assortment of pieces laying on your table, we'll make some faint reference lines which can be etched into the cutout pieces of wood to give you a clue for which shape is next and where it sits. So I'm gonna take this group of contours and I'm just gonna make a copy of this group and I'm gonna call this reference. And I'll give them a slightly different appearance, just for my own sake. And I can get rid of this sea level reference layer because there's no contour group that's bigger than this that I have to reference. It's kind of confusing, but just trust me. So I'll just get rid of the lowest level in my reference layers. These are just visual references that are gonna be etched onto the chunk of wood to give you an indication for where to stack the next piece. Okay, now I'm gonna start arranging these polygons of equal elevation so that they don't overlap with each other. Each one of these things has to be cut out and become a little chunk of wood so they can't overlap with each other or else they'll nibble into each other's material. So here's what we do. We grab the lowest elevation layer and then the one up elevation layer that it corresponds to from our reference group actual wood and then reference. And I'll just move this way over here. You can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing now. So this and then 500 contour and it's 1000 meter reference line can come over here and so on and so forth. 1000, 1500, move it out of the way for no overlap. And by the way, you can rotate these as long as you don't change the scale of one and not all of them. And I haven't included labels or a north arrow or scale bar just to keep things simple for demonstration, but you can totally do those things. Add the north arrow and scale bar in Pro before you export it, you'll have to make a layout. And if you have any text in this, you have to convert the text to path because Glowforge doesn't recognize fonts, it only recognizes paths. So convert all text to paths. And just so it's clear to your pal who's gonna have to cut these, I'll call this cut and etch. Glowforge has the notion of cutting all the way through something or using a weaker strength to just etch a line reference. Now at this point, I can just save this as an SVG file, scalable vector graphics, and feed it to Chris's laser robot. Now if there's any minify or compression in here, uncheck it because we don't want that screwing up our shapes. Then we wrap it up, send it to Chris, who can plug it into his exquisite machine and turn our GIS and Illustrator ramblings into something real and stackable and touchable and fun. I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for watching.